this is uh, your webinar on understanding impairments. My name is Professor Cherry Ann Garcia Durante, and we're here um, together with uh, Above and Beyond Classrooms so that you can understand a little more about yourself and others around you. So let's get started. Okay, so this is, um, for those who do not know me, this is a little bit of information about me. So I graduated uh, BS Nursing from St. Louis University, um, Master of Science in Public Health, Major in Nutrition from UP Manila. Um, I am a National Nursing Reviewer and currently an Assistant Professor in the University of Perpetual Health, Dr. Jose G. Tamayo Medical University. <clears throat> I am a research advisor with, re with research works recognized and presented in conferences both locally and internationally. I am uh, the Curriculum Directress of Eli Asia, a registered nurse, <clears throat> a retreat workshop speaker, and a campus training volunteer. So I am the head of Above and Beyond Classrooms Advocacy. Okay, so let me begin by telling you a story about a man. So on August 31, 2004, at 5 o'clock in the morning, a Burger King employee in Richmond Hill, Georgia, found a man unconscious, sunburned, and naked behind the dumpster of the restaurant. And this man had three depressions in his skull that appeared to have been caused by blunt force trauma. So um, technically, they thought that this man was robbed. Okay. So what happened there was after discovering him, employees called the emergency service, services and EMS took him to St. Joseph's Candler Hospital in Savannah. He had no identity, no documents, no ID, and was recorded in hospital as Burger King Doe. Because he was found on the lot of Burger King and an employee found him. So he woke up in the hospital with total amnesia. Ibig sabihin, wala po siyang recollection of who he is. They cannot remember his name. So the police, so what the police did is to run his DNA and fingerprints. However, they did not find him on their records. So there, there was no record of who he was. Just later, that's 2008, a nationwide show in the U.S. hosted him to get in touch with his fa family, but no one came forward. On September 16, 2015, the man announced on his Facebook page that his identity had been established through DNA sequencing and elimination. So after a couple of years, so after he appeared on the show, wala pa rin. And then after a couple of years, that's the time that they were able to find who he was. And this is him, so you can Google him. For 11 years, this man, now known as William Burgess Powell, had no identity. Can you imagine? Those 11 years, he had no present, he had no past, he had no family, and no friends. If that were you, can you imagine if you have to live for 11 years without knowing who you are? So it's very difficult for us to have this missing piece of who we are. And if we don't know our identity, sometimes we make actions or we do things, no? May, na, may mga nagagawa tayong mga bagay that we cannot explain ourselves. You know, may mga feelings tayong na-feel na hindi natin maintindihan. So, to find out if this webinar is actually for you, let me give you some questions. And uh, if, you know, you can just answer yes and, and then count the number of yeses. You know, na, you, if you answered yes, so you just count so that you have your points at the end of the questions. Okay, so it's, it's uh, 10 questions. Okay, so let's, okay, let's have the first question. Have you ever hurt someone you love with your words? Okay, so that's the first question. If yes, count one. If no, zero. Next. Have you ever been scared or anxious for reasons you do not know? Natakot ka na ba or kinabahan? Pero hindi mo alam kung bakit or ano yung dahilan. 
Number three, have you ever been suspicious of other people's good deeds to you? So, may ginawa mabuti siya sa'yo. Tapos ikaw parang, ba't niya kaya ginawa yun? Hmm. So, have you ever been suspicious of good deeds? So, count mo ah. So, some of you, three out of three na. Okay, next. Have you ever exploded with anger about something minor? <laughs> Natatawa ako kasi, you know, uh, I am actually, <laughs> yes na yes. Okay, so that is uh, number four. Number five, have you ever given up at something because of lack of confidence? Okay, have you ever given up at something? Kasi feeling mo, hindi mo kaya. So, di mo, either hindi mo ginawa or nag-give up ka. Hindi ka na nag-try. Number six. Have you ever felt afraid that someone, someone will not love you if you did not achieve your goal? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's as if that your worth is based on you being able to achieve stuff. Number seven. Have you ever been rejected by someone important to you? Okay. Have you ever been rejected, abandoned by someone important to you? Number eight, have you ever wanted recognition so bad and yet failed to get it? Like you just want people to see you or your work or for your boss or your teacher to just, you know, see that it's actually you who did the group work or the thesis, but you failed to get it. Number nine, have you ever said negative things about someone else behind their backs? So it's um, including chat, no? Sa chat. So yung mga, you know, uh, sa GC ka usam, tawas iba pa yung private message. And have you ever said negative things about someone else behind their back? So yes or no lang to. Yes or no. For those who are just coming in, um, this is just a yes or no question. You're just counting the number of yes and the no. And number 10, have you ever been overwhelmed with everyday life? It's like, you know, you feel overwhelmed. You feel it's too much. Okay. So out of 10, can you, if you were watching from the beginning, can you give us your points? Yeah. Out of 10, what is your point? Is it 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10? So can you, do, can you just comment that on the comment section? How many points did you get in our Have You Ever? Now, if you have points like 6 and above, then you know that this webinar is really for you because it seems that there are actions uh, that you do, pero parang di mo maintindihan or di mo makontrol, no? Okay, so we have 8 out of 10. What about the others? How many points did you get? Okay, so this webinar is for you if you got like 6 and above out of 10. Okay, so my score here is 8 out of 10 as well. Okay, so let's move on. The question here is this. Have you ever asked yourself, why do I act? or react this way. Like, for example, you know, um, one, uh, my event, and then parang naisip mo, ba't ba ako ganun nag-react? Parang medyo huli na, no? Huli na yung, yung ID, yung, yung uh, recognition mo na, bakit ko nga ba sinabi yun? Or ba't ko nga ba ginawa yun? So the first thing that we will look at is what we call as the mirror principle. The mirror principle. Now, the mirror principle is, uh, states that, have I examined myself and taken responsibility for who I am? So, um, it's good that you are here in this webinar because this is one of the steps that you're taking to look at yourself and say, um, bakit nga ba ako ganito? Is there like any, uh, you know, um, reason for this? Or, um, dahil ito ako, I have to take responsibility for who I am and also to improve and not to make it as an excuse. So let me clarify that this webinar is not for you to have an excuse for who you are. It's for you to take responsibility of what you will eventually find out here. So that's your mirror principle. 
Now, people who are unaware of who they are and what they do often damage relationships with others. I don't know if you agree with this, but there are uh, self awareness is one of the knowledge, you know. So, if you're gauging the knowledge of an individual, self awareness or what we call as your intrapersonal knowledge is part of that. So, many people are unaware that they hurt other people or they're unaware that their actions are um, aggressive so to others you know hindi nila alam na nakakasakit na sila and if you're not that if, if you're that person rather that uh, who is unaware na ah nakakasakit na pala ko ang tendency you damage relationships that you have with either your family or especially the people closest to you. Kasi kanino ba tayo nag-flare up? Kanino ba tayo mabilis magalit? Hindi naman dun sa stranger, right? Most of the time, the people that we hurt with our words are the people who love us, the people who are close to us. And ang tendency is that we damage that relationship if we are not aware. So you have to work on your self-awareness. According to this, the first person I must know is myself. Not other people around me, but myself. Human nature seems to endow people with the ability to size up everybody in the world but themselves. You know, even the Bible states that. Even the Bible says that um, bago mo tingnan, di ba? Yung, yung muta sa, sa iyong uh, kapwa, eh, tanggalin mo muna yung troso sa iyong Mga mata. And sometimes we're like that. If others uh, did something, it's easy for us to comment, to criticize. And yet, if it comes to us, it seems that we are blinded. No? So the goal of this is to, for us to actually know who we are. Okay? So uh, this is about self-image, self-honesty. So we have um, self-improvement. But most of all, we want to know who we are. So this is all under the mirror principle. So let me give you a self-reflection question. If you were to ask fa uh, family members, friends, and colleagues, which of your attitudes and habits are causing you more harm than good, what would they say? Okay, so if you're going to ask people close to you, Ano yung mga ugali mo or habits mo na nakakasama sa'yo? What would they say? List five unhealthy attitudes and habits you have. Okay? So if you're, you know, if you have that on, if you have a piece of paper or notebook, so can you list down five unhealthy attitudes or habits that you have? And then now that you have identified them, how can you change this for the better? Okay, so um, this is your action plan. So I, I will leave this to you for self-reflection so that we can move on to our results for your temperament test. Now, I am hoping that each of you have taken the test already. But if not, so that's just uh, my hope, but if not, you can still download the test and answer the test. Okay, so for those who are able to answer the test already of the, for the temperament test, so let me give you the results of this test. If you, now, the answer, or the, rather the, you, we're looking for your highest and second highest. So as you can see in your test, you have different sections there, right? So, you have section A, B, C, and D. So, for those who downloaded their test, you know what I'm talking about. For those who haven't uh, downloaded their tests yet, so you can still, as I've said, download it. So, you have the link on the description box. And then, so that you can follow what we are talking about here on, uh, on this um, webinar. Okay? So, for those who were not yet able to do the test, okay, so um, you can just follow it up or review it after this uh, temperament. We will provide a copy of this uh, video on uh, my YouTube, cha YouTube channel, uh, Everyday Learner. Okay, so if your highest is section one, 
then your temperament is sanguine. So sanguine, as you can see here, it says sanguine personality. So if you're such, that's your highest, then you have a sanguine personality. Now, if your highest is section two, then you have a choleric personality, as you can see here, choleric personality. If your highest is section three, you have a melancholic personality, melancholy personality. And if your highest is section four, you have a phlegmatic personality, phlegmatic personality. Now, we will talk about each of them one by one. So it's really, it's raining, it's raining really hard right now in our place. I hope that you can still hear me and understand what I'm trying to say. So uh, for those who have taken the test, this is actually a test from Tim LaHaye. And uh, in this test, he actually uh, mentioned that it's always a combination of two personality blends. So let's say, for example, you have to look in your test, which is your highest and second highest. So for example, your highest is section, a, section one, and then your second highest is section two. Then your personality or your temperament is a combination of sanguine and choleric. So we call that sang -clor. Okay, sanguine choleric. So if your highest is one, section one, and your high uh, and your second highest is section three, then you have sanguine melancholic or sang mel. So uh, that is how you do your or how you interpret the test that I have given you before this. Okay. So with that, let's talk about the different personalities and temperaments. This will actually help you understand not just you but also understand the people around you. For example, your family. So you can use the test to, uh, to have your family take it, and then you will understand and even predict, you know, uh, what the, the, the test would be or the results would be. Okay, so uh, let us proceed. Okay, so what is temperaments? Many people are asking me before this, um, Mom Che, what is, tem what is a temperament? Okay, so I want to I want I want to know. So I've told them it's a combination of actually your inherited traits and the behavior or the uh, circumstances that come about uh, in your surroundings. So temperament is the combination of inborn traits that sub subconsciously affects all our behavior, which are passed on by our genes from our parents and grandparents. It is a person's temperament that makes a person either extrovert or introvert. Now, we have the built-in temperament, but at the same time, or that inherited temperament, at the same time, our temperaments may change depending on our environment. So, for example, uh, when you were, let's say, young, you are an introvert. But however, when you, uh, when you um, become an adult, your work involves media. For example, social media, wherein you need to do some form of public speaking or you're the boss and then you, you have to like be assertive. So it's possible that from being an introvert, uh, you somehow transition into being an extrovert. Okay, so it's possible. So I'm not saying that uh, that happens all the time, but it could happen. Okay, so that is what the impairments are. Now, let's talk about sanguine. So, if you are a sanguine, and it means that you tested highest on section one of the test that I have given you, it means that, these are your characteristics, the sanguine is the warm, lively, and fun-loving temperament. The sanguines never lack friends. They are people-oriented. They can genuinely feel the joys and sorrows of the people they meet and have the capacity to make other people feel important. Sanguines are cheerful talkers. Okay, so if you're a sanguine, then you can uh, probably relate to this. You know, you have a lot of friends. Um, you have, uh, let's say, a very bubbly attitude, very bouncy, and uh, sometimes very loud, and very talkative, and yeah. So uh, these are your sanguines. So what are the sanguines' strengths? 
Okay, so each temperament, I'll show you, have their own strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so let's uh, look at uh, different strengths. First is entertaining. So a sanguine, it says here, no one enjoys life more than sanguines. They are easily inspired to engage in new projects and their boundless enthusiasm often carries others along with them. So, uh, if you know a person who's a sanguine, alam mo agad siya, you know, this person stands out from the crowd. Kasi usually, sila yung magaling mag-joke, malakas tumawa, you know, and people just want to be with them because of the energy that they exude. Yung tipong wala ng energy yung mga tao, but the sanguines, they still have the energy to like fire people up. So, that's, uh, that, that is a sanguine. A sanguine is also optimistic. They tend to let life unfold naturally without advanced planning. So, pagkabasa ko pa lang nun, magkakaidea ka na na may downside yon, di ba? Thinking that tomorrow will be better than today. So, their optimism is just, uh, you know, so it's boundless. They, they, they want to, you know, sanguis, sanguines do not uh, necessarily plan. So they, like, let's do it because they're spontaneous. So isa sa mga characteristic ng sanguines, they're very spontaneous. So pwede mo salang isalang ngayon din. Okay? So sige, go. Ano ka dyan? Mag, uh, magpalaro ka. <laughs> so, okay. Mag-MC ka. Okay, sige. So it's the, that is their um, attitude. Okay? That's their strength. And then they're very friendly. Ang sanguine, the outgoing, handshaking, touching demeanor of the cheerful sanguine stems from their genuine love for people. So these people are um, very good with other people. Okay, so they have this very warm. Alam mo yun, yung pag, pagkakasama mo sila, you feel like you're accepted, you feel like you belong. Sanguines, uh, sanguines, as it says here, they enjoy being around others, sharing their joys and sorrows. Okay, so they they love like uh, either listening to other people's story or telling their own story, their life story. They're so friendly that um, you will see them actually not picking friends. So kahit sino yan, kahit na nag uh, na magtataho o kaya yung magbabalot, tas magulat ka na lang kinuwento na ng sanguine yung kanyang life story dun sa magbabalot. Ayan. So, pero, you know, because of the, the friendly uh, demeanor ng sanguine. Sanguines are also known as compassionate. It says here, no one responds more genuinely to the needs of others. So, they are, you know, ang, ang isa sa mga makikita mo sa sanguines are uh, ones that they see something that touches their hearts, talagang luluha yan, no? So that is uh, one of the characteristics of a sanguine. They're very compassionate. Minsan yung, if somebody is like sharing their story, yung nagsishare ng story, hindi umiiyak. Pero yung sanguine, dun sa audience, umiiyak na. You know? So that is uh, the strength. Yung compassion nila, no? talagang pag natouch mo yung puso nila, you know, the tears will come. Okay, so next up, we have their weaknesses. Obviously po, ang um, merong strength, merong weakness. Lahat po ng temperaments, walang merong monopoly ng lahat ng strengths. Obviously, every temperament has their own weakness. Ano ang downside ng sanguine? Sanguines are restless. Okay? Meaning, they are often impractical and disorganized. And so, technically, ang sanguine hirap ngayon sa ating enhanced community quarantine because they don't want to stay at home, okay? So, siguro yung mga, uh, I'm not sure kung ilang percentage ng mga nahuli na lumalabas ay mga sanguine, pero technically, yan yung isa sa mga uh, weakness nila. They want to go out, they want to, you know, have fun. Okay, so sanguines are often impractical and disorganized, meaning, ayan, pagka daw binuksan mo yung bag ng sanguine or even yung room ng isang sanguine, makikita mo na magulo. Okay, so uh, yung resibo ng nakaraang taon ay nandun pa. Ayan. And um, 
Yeah, so that, that's the, uh, the weakness of a sanguine. Uh, they are often not good students and unproductive. Ayan. Often, but not all the time. Kasi nga sabi nga po natin, um, it's always a combination of two uh, personalities. Uh, that's the or temperaments. Which is, pwede na yung isa mong temperament, for example, sanguine ka, pero yung isa mong temperament balances it out. So, it's possible that you're also a good student. Ayan. So, however, technically, if you're a sanguine, yun daw yung tendency na you're not a good student, um, you are unproductive. So, ibig sabihin, pag may group work, yun, dinaan mo lang sila sa kwento. Ayan. Yung mga kagrupo mo, no? Ikaw yung nagkakwento, ikaw yung ano, bangka, kumbaga. Pero sila yung gawa ng gawa ng project. Okay? They are impulsive and undisciplined. Yun, isa pong weakness din ng sanguine is being impulsive, meaning, agad-agad mag no? Um, because most of the time, they are driven by their own emotion. So, makikita mo yung sanguine parang uh, one day, parang, you know, uh, they're like, they're so happy and then the next, they're not. So, they're so driven by emotions. And then, um, they're impulsive also in terms of spending. Ayan. So, pag may nakitang sale, minsan mapapabili yung sanguine ng marami na hindi naman niya kailangan. Undisciplined in the sense that uh, sanguines, uh, there's a, there is a tendency that they do not abide by the rules that they set for themselves. Yan. So, ang sanguine meron niyang New, Year, New Year's resolution. So, pwede magawa niya yan ng January. Pero pagdating ng February at March, yan. So, medyo kalimutan na. So, meron si may problema sila with consistency. Yan. I say sila, pero um, I have to be honest. So, my main personality is sanguine, as you probably could have uh, seen because of this video. Next is your weak-willed. So, easily swayed by other people's decision. So, for example, may sabi na, tara, ano tayo, cutting tayo. So, ah, sige, sige ako. Huwag na tayong pumasok. Ah, sige, sige, hindi ako mapasok. So, ganun. They have this go-with-the-flow attitude. Okay lang, sige, marami naman kami hindi pumasok. So, they have this, uh, that is the weakness of a sanguine. So, other weaknesses will be egotistical. A sang sanguines interrupts and dominates conversations. So, if you have a friend who is a sanguine, um, you can easily, I told you, you can spot them a mile away kasi sila yung malakas yung boses, malakas tumawa. They are the people who tends to, you know, be the one saying many things, you know, dun sa conversation. Siya talaga yung bangka. Talks about themselves a lot. Kapag, ang, kapag ikaw ay sanguine and um, hindi ka masyadong self-aware, you have this tendency of dominating the conversation. Na uh, medyo na off na yung mga tao around you kasi parang, oy, siya na naman. Ah, ikaw na magaling. <laughs> so, that, that is the problem. That's why self-awareness is very, very important. Um, it's, not it's not because na nagyayabang sila. It's just because it's their tendency to talk. And um, because sometimes they cannot talk about other subjects or other matters, so they talk about themselves. And if you're a sanguine, you have to be careful about this, okay? So, bilang sanguine, ako po naranasan ko yun. There were times when I was uh, young na I tend to manipulate conversations. And maraming no off sa akin. They think of me as mayabang. They think of me as, alam mo yun, lalo na kung halimbawa may shinere yung isa, tapos sabi mo, ay, ako din. Alam mo yun. So, if, if, you're, if you're sanguine and that's your weakness, um, you have to pause before you answer. You have to... Tapos meron advantage sa'yo na huwag ka kagad magre-respond sa mga text, text messages or PM. You have to pause, basahin, kalmahin ang sarili, and then, you know, mag, magpalipas ka ng, you know, a couple of minutes before responding to a message, especially something that uh, that hurt you. Kasi there, there is a tendency that, you know, um, mag... mag and unleash ka ng emotions mo. Okay? Yung mga angry outbursts. Because that's the another weakness of a sanguine. A sanguine is never far from tears and have angry outbursts. As I've told you, pag ang sanguine, masaya, masayang masaya. Pag malungkot, malungkot na malungkot. Pag galit, galit na galit. And it's like, it's, uh, ang problema dun sa sanguine, para siyang, um, alam mo yun, yung, yung iba kasi, yung 
anger, meron, ano may nagbi-build up, yan. Pero ang sanguin, parang, yung galit niya, poop, diretso agad sa level 10. Alam mo yan? So, parang accelerated. Ayan. And uh, that's a problem for us because uh, when sanguines are angry, they have this tendency to hurt people with their words, with their anger. Ang problema pa doon is that when your anger is done, you know, I mean, nakarelease ka na ng galit mo, there's a tendency for you to assume that uh, okay na. <laughs> Parang wala kang nasaktan. Okay? So, uh, you have to, uh, you're, you, you have to uh, be careful with that. And also, it says here, no one can love you more or forget you faster than sanguines. But if you're forgotten, it's not intentional. Isa sa mga weakness ng sanguine, actually, strength niya yung pagiging friendly. But it, at the same time, it becomes a weakness because Sometimes they forget their friends. Ano mo yun? Yung parang, ay, oh, dati close na close ka. Bakit bigla siyang nawala? Ayan. So yung sanguin medyo nanggo-ghost. Ganon. Kasi pag may mga time na gusto mo sa ka pa niya, ayan, kausap ka pa niya and all. And then eventually, parang, ay, nalimutan ka na niya. Naka, nakamove on na siya. So may tendency ka na parang, but isa sa weakness sa sanguin, ang dami mong crush. Somehow wala kang loyalty dun sa sa crush mo, yan, mamaya iba na naman. Okay? So, that is uh, actually a sanguine. But if you're friends with a sanguine, um, so how do you deal with with friends who are sanguine? So, I'm just gonna give you an option. Uh, kung may kaibigan kang ganito, okay, na sanguine, syempre may strength siya. Gusto mo siyang makasama because masarap siyang kasama because it's fun, right? And sometimes, Kaya lang sometimes sa papansin mo na parang she or he dominates the conversation. So, uh, when that happens, uh, give allowances if you have a sanguine friend. Kasi alam mo na yun yung weakness niya. So, bigyan mo lang siya ng, ng time makapagsabi tungkol sa sarili niya. And also, um, if you have a sanguine friend, isa sa mga gusto ng sanguine, actually everyone wants that, pero yung sanguine, mas gusto-gusto niya is attention and... Um, yeah, so they want attention and actually yung um yung compliments. Ayan. So, para sa isang sanguine, minsan nag-fish siya ng compliments eh. So, pag kinakompliment mo yung sanguine mong friend, ang sarap nun sa feeling niya. So, if if you have a sanguine friend, you can do that. You know, so you can compliment them, you can um uh, you can give them attention kasi yun yung gusto nila. Okay? So, uh, that is for sanguine. So, let's talk about the next temperament. So, look at your uh, your tests, yung mga na-take nyo na po. And if you are highest on section 2, that means you are a choleric. I'm just uh, checking my time here. Okay, so for cholerics, the choleric, so good to po yun, know, if you, it's your highest or second highest, uh, you will uh, see pareho yung strengths and weaknesses nung temperament na yun sa'yo. So, for example, highest mo 1, tapos ang second highest mo 2. So, ang tawag sa'yo, sanguine choleric. Uh, so, makikita mo yung ibang ugali ng sanguine sa'yo at yung ibang ugali ng choleric sa'yo din. No? So, this, it's a combination of two temperaments. Okay? So, let's talk about choleric. So, the choleric is the quick, active, practical, and strong-willed temperament. Okay? So, from the words pa lang na yun, no? Someone comes into mind. Someone who's strong-willed. Someone who's very independent. Tends to be opinionated. Finding it easy to make decisions. They're well-organized and natural-born leaders. From that description, kung ikaw to alam mo na agad, ako yan. Okay? Kasi you're very independent. Ikaw meron ka, you know, very, very strong opinion. Okay? So, people know you as a leader. So, kapag meron, uh, that is one thing about the cholerics is, uh, kung ang sanguine, you know them from far off. Ang choleric naman, if you're in a group, you know, you already know who's the choleric. Because that person is a strong-willed person who's very opinionated and probably will become the leader of your group. Okay, so let's talk about the cholerics. What are their strengths? So, isa sa mga strengths ng choleric is that they are very strong-willed. When they put in their mind into something, 
That's it. You can bet on it. They will do it. Okay? That's a choleric. They're self-disciplined. Okay? They're very confident. And they're continually moving with purpose and planning. Okay? So, technically, ang cholerics are extrovert. Obviously, ang sanguine's extrovert. Ang cholerics then extrovert. They're very confident. Okay? Isa to sa mga nagustuhan ko sa uh, choleric na temperament because they are very disciplined. Alam niyo po yun, sa kanilang sarili and even sa mga tao around them. They're practical. Cholerics are happiest when engaged in worthwhile activities. That's the reason why if you have friends who are cholerics, okay, by nature, wag na wag kang magpapagawa sa kanya ng isang bagay na sa tingin niya ay wala namang sense. Or, ano mo yun, ayaw ng isang choleric na na-waste yung time niya. Ayaw niya yun. Ayaw na ayaw niya na, ano ba to ba't ba natin ito ginagawa? Parang, ano, nonsense. Parang ganun. So, ayaw niya yun. So, you have to make sure that all the activities that you're giving a choleric will uh, be something beneficial for the choleric. No? So, uh, yan yung isa sa mga gusto niya. Kasi kapag, ka, um, uh, Especially if they, they are, you know, um, being asked to do something and then they don't believe on the leader. So, there is this, uh, you will feel the tension na ayaw nilang gawin yun. Okay. So, as I've told you, cholerics are leaders by nature. They tend to be picked as leaders in groups. So, sa school, uh, kahit minsan bagong pasok pa lang kayo, you know, you don't know anything about each other. And yet, there's a tendency that the choleric will be picked as leaders. Okay, so quick and courageous in emergency situations. So we need our cholerics because they are the ones who, who are very good in terms of decision making. So kay, kapag ka, lalo na pag emergency situations, you need cholerics to direct, you know, yung ano, hindi, hindi pwedeng democratic ang style ng leadership kapag ka, uh, emergency situations. Can you imagine yung democratic style? For example, um, may, let's say, may flash flood, no? So, hindi ka pwede magsabi na, ah, okay, may flash flood. Okay, uh, sino po ang, uh, um, anyone in favor na mag-relocate sa school? Tapos po tayo. Hindi, hindi ka pwede ganun. Ang emergency situations, you need a leader who will make the decision. Okay, everyone, okay. So, lahat ng mga taga-barangay ganito, mag-relocate sa ganyan. Kaya, so, you need that in emergency situations. You need your cholerics. Now, cholerics are optimistics. Um, they are unafraid to take risks. So, as I've told you, um, they, are, uh, they are also extroverts. So, they have a natural adventurous spirit. And so, mga cholerics, makita mo, they are like hikers, you know, adventure seekers. Makikita mo rin yun sa mga sanguine, pero ang choleric kasi, organized. Yung pagiging uh, risk taker niya, at least may plano. No? Adversity doesn't discourage them, but it causes them to be more determined in achieving success. Pag mahirap, ito yung major difference ng dalawang extrovert. No? Ang sang sanguine, pag mahirap, parang ayaw na niya. Ang choleric, pag mahirap, mas gusto niya. Kasi it's more challenging. You know? So parang, Ah, ganun na. Sige, I'll prove to you. <laughs> so, medyo ganyan yung choleric. Okay? So, weakness. Oh, no. Okay. So, uh, this, um, for disclosure only, so this is also, this is my second temperament. So, my temperament is sanguine choleric. So, you can see, uh, yung mga tao around me, they can see the strengths and weaknesses of both temperaments sa akin. No? So, Hot-tempered. Ibig sabihin, easily angry. Okay? Yan ang choleric. They can be violently angry and revengeful. Isa sa mga weaknesses ng mga choleric is that they have a tendency because when they're angry and it's an explosive anger, they tend to get violent. So, sila yung mga either nanununtok or nagbabato ng mga bagay pag galit. So, this is a very... A bad witness for a choleric because there's a tendency to hurt the people you love physically because of your hot temper. So you have to make sure that when you're that if you're a choleric and when you're angry, you don't let uh, you don't uh, engage dun sa taong kinagagalita mo. Uh, you have to you know step back a couple of steps back 
so that you can be a uh, cool you know so isa sa mga um kapag whenever i'm angry kasi it's one of my weaknesses i get to like you know be violent you know i, I tend to throw stuff if i'm uh, and you know yourself there because of self awareness if i'm near that you know that point so what i do is i just get out of the room you know that's one of the things i do so that i can calm down so uh, because of uh, choleric Okay, so next is cruel. Isa sa mga um, weaknesses ng choleric is people think of you as unsympathetic. Um, kasi parang wala kang compassion. Unlike yung sanguine na very, very compassionate with people, if you're choleric, you tend to, like, parang wala kang, pake, wala kang pakialam sa iba. You know, kasi you're very independent. So, sarili mo ang iniisip mo. Tapos kapag may umiiyak, alam mo yun, parang, huwag umiiyak. For you, sometimes it's a sign of weakness to cry, so you don't cry that often. If you're a choleric, you don't want to apologize, and that's a very uh, that's the very thing that you have to work out on because there are so many relationships that can be saved, you know, reconciled if people just learn how to apologize. So you need to learn how to apologize. But that's one of your weaknesses. Another weakness for a choleric is they're prideful or boastful. They think that their way is the best way. My way is the best way. Doesn't take suggestions. Okay? So, isa to sa mga weaknesses, no? If you're a choleric or you know a choleric, alam mo yan, kapag kasama mo siya sa group, there's a tendency that this choleric will somehow impose kung ano yung tingin niya na best way to do a project or the best way to go about an assignment. Uh, the tendency is yung ibang mga, uh, mga, yung mga classmates who are with them, hindi nila ngayon, uh, hindi niya, parang hindi niya pinapakinggan yung suggestions nila. They tend to be domineering in relationships. So, kapag ikaw ay choleric, there's a tendency for you to be the one deciding in the relationship. So, kung, for example, uh, let me give you a sample from a movie. So, if you watch um, One More Chance, yan, kay Popoy and Basha. So, from that, palang makita mo na si Popoy is choleric. You know, he tends to be domineering in the relationship. Siya na susunod, even, you know, uh, parang inconsiderate of the feelings of Basha. <laughs> Talaga yun know, reference ko. Finds difficulty in depending on anyone. Yan. Isang problema ng choleric is your trust issues because uh, there is a possibility that their trust was broken before by people so they don't trust anyone except themselves. Now, that will be a problem because alam mo naman sa sarili mo that you have weaknesses. If you're really an honest, you cannot do everything on your own. Uh, however, if you're a choleric, you try to do everything on your own. So you, that's something that you have to work on. Now, if you have a friend who is choleric or a family member who's choleric, so the way to approach them is to ask them to teach you things, you know? Isa yan sa mga best way kasi they want that feeling of a mentor. No? Pag ikaw choleric, gusto mo yung feeling na may nagagawa ka positively for someone. Um, hindi ko na-mention, pero cholerics are great friends. They will defend you. Alam mo yan? Kung, ang, kung ikaw ay ibang personality tapos may kaibigan kang choleric, although yung choleric mo yung sobrang prangka, nakakasakit minsan, pero pag ipaglalaban ka naman niya sa mga, sa mga ibang tao, you know, so you can depend on, on the choleric. Uh, so kung meron kang friend na choleric, it's good to, um, uh, for you to ask them to teach you things, you know, ask them to mentor you because uh, isa yan sa mga gusto ng choleric for them to be able to influence others for the better. Okay, so that is your choleric. Now, the next impairment, this is actually section four, okay? So, medyo nag-jump tayo, no? So, yung, if you are, uh, if you're, if you have your, your um, test with you, at ang highest mo ay section 4, or yun yung second highest mo, you're a phlegmatic. Ano ba yung phlegmatic? So, phlegmatic is calm, cool, easygoing, and well-balanced. So, alam mo yun, may pandemic, pero chill. Yeah, they are naturally uh, introverts. So, chill lang sila, cool lang sila. They're very easygoing. Parang di na si stress. And they are relaxed. 
and they're very good listeners. No? So you want a friend who's phlegmatic because they will be the one who will listen to you and usually shy. So pag meron kang phleg- kung ikaw ay yung phlegmatic, you know, you're usually shy, especially in, in social situations. Um, but when stimulated to do something, they are very efficient. So, uh, um, technically, they're introverted, as I've said. And actually, this is uh, the most introverted personality. So, they're just cool. They wa- uh, It's okay for them to stay home for long periods of time and it to be alone. So, yun lang, chill. Yeah. So, strengths ng phlegmatic. If you have a, if you're the phlegmatic, so you are witty and <laughs> nakakatawa. They make other uh, they make other people laugh and they laugh easily. And so gusto ng so yung, yung phlegmatic na kaibigan kasi madaling patawanin at magaling din sila magpatawa. Uh, yung pero nakakatawa kasi yung pagpapatawa nila minsan or madalas di nila sinasadya. It says here they tend to say funny things without meaning to make others laugh. You know, um, there's a tendency kasi for a phlegmatic to be, when they're processing things, medyo, medyo mabagal. Kasi yun, di ba, cool sila. You know, kalmado sila. So, when they process things, medyo mabagal. Not that they're slow learners, no? It's just, a, it's, they, they process things differently. And when that happens, they tend to like, you know, make a funny comment or make a mistake, make an error. And people tend to laugh, you know. So, yeah, nakakaya, nakakatawa rin sila. They are dependable. Okay, so isang strength ng iyong phlegmatic, you're dependable. Fulfills assigned tasks and does the proper thing. Isa sa mga ugali ng isang phlegmatic, which is, uh, I think, uh, I love, is that they want to follow the rules, you know. There are rules, they want to follow it to the letter. They're good counselors, objective in advising. So, magaling mag-advise. And they are good listeners, as I've told you. Kasi, di ba, as you recall, if you have, uh, in terms of advising, yung sanguine, pag mag advice hindi ka pa tapos magsalita, may, ano na siya, may, may sasabihin na siya. Yung choleric naman, papagalitan ka niya. Okay? Yung phlegmatic, papakinggan ka niya. Okay? So, that's the, one of the good things about a, a phlegmatic. So, another is that, as I've told you, they're efficient. They're good followers. So, isa sa mga strength ng phlegmatic is that they are good followers. They're practical and well-organized. They're very neat. So, if you have, uh, if you are phlegmatic, so there's a tendency that your clothes or your, uh, your yung mga, ano mo, very organized. Uh, relaxed and high standards of accuracy and precision. So they want to do, as I told you, they want to do things correctly. Okay, so yun yung phlegmatic. Now, what about the weaknesses of a phlegmatic? So they are slow and lazy. Slow meaning slow gumalaw. Okay, slow and lazy. Parang may mga times na pagayo nila na tumrababaho, ni sila tatayo. Yeah. Nandun lang nakahiga, you know. They tend to lack motivation. It's in some mga weaknesses na because of uh, their calm demeanor, cool demeanor, parang hindi sila motivated to do things. You know, so dyan pasok yung choleric at saka yung, yung sanguine. Because they are the ones who will push the phlegmatic to do things, you know. Doesn't want to ex- exert too much effort. Ang isa sa mga weakness ng phlegmatic, ayaw mapagod. <laughs> ayaw mapagod. Huwag na, yon. Selfish and stubborn. They are stingy with money, effort, and even emotions. Now, um, isa sa mga makikita mong weakness ng phlegmatic is that they don't share a lot. Unlike the sanguines who share a lot. So, yung phlegmatic, they tend to keep things to themselves. And sometimes it includes their effort and their, their money. So, hindi sila masyadong ma-share. And um, phlegmatic, they want something steady, with, which means they don't want change. So, kung pwedeng yun pa rin, you know, you know, yun pa rin. So, yung, ayaw nila may mga nababago, let's say, schedule, nakaschedule na, tapos babagoy mo, ayaw nila yun. So, yun yung phlegmatic. And they tend to be shy. Yan. So, uh, they need to, uh, they need a push to go out of their shell. So, yan po yung mga weaknesses ng phlegmatic. Another major weakness of a phlegmatic, and you know this if you have 
a friend who's phlegmatic is that they are indecisive. Hindi sila maka-decide. Kung anong kinabilis mag-decision ng, ng choleric, siya namang ayaw mag ng phlegmatic. They have this tendency to um, allow other people to decide for them. Even the courses that they're taking, even sometimes magulat ka, the, the food that they're eating, the clothes that they're wearing, ibang taong nag-decide for them. Uh, it actually stems from doesn't uh, for from them not wanting to make mistakes. Kasi ayun yung magkamali. So, ang gagawin na lang nila, for example, you're in a restaurant, tas order ng food. So, kahit meron siyang ibang gustong order, pero dahil nakita niya, sabi, ikaw nakapag-decide ka na, baka sabi mo, chicken sa akin. Sabi niya, oh, sige, ako din. <clears throat> ganun siya. So, parang ikaw, kung ano yung decision mo, yun na rin kanya. Ako na rin, ganun na rin. Same na lang. So, ayun nila magkaroon ng mistake. So, tendency either gagayahin nila yung decision ng iba or iba magde-decide for them. They're fearful of authority and they tend to be forgetful. So, if you have a friend who's phlegmatic, alam mo yan, marami ang naiiwan or marami ang hindi makita. <laughs> Ayan, ng mga gamit. Ayan. So, they tend to like, you know, go around the house or uh, ano, basta sa kakahanap ng isang bagay na hindi nila makita or hindi nila mahanap or hindi nila maalala kung saan nila niligay. Okay? So, that is your phlegmatic. Last uh, in your temperaments is your melancholic. So the melancholic, um, <clears throat> if you're highest on section three of the test, this is uh, your temperament. It's called melancholic. So the melancholic is analytical, gifted, perfectionist type with a sensitive nature. They are introvert in nature with a strong desire to be accepted. They are the most dependable temperament with high IQ and exceptional talents. So if you're a melancholic, which I'm not. And so, sabi dito, no, exceptional. So, they're very talented. They're very gifted. Probably their gifts, um, their talents is not just, although it's also academic kasi high IQ, pero it's not just that. They also have other talents like painting um, or singing or instruments. Yan, yun yung ang, uh, gifting ng isang melancholic. Okay, so melancholics are sensitive and uh, because sensitive in the sense that positive side of the, their sensitivity is they are able to figure out if there's something wrong with their friend or their family member just by looking at them, just by observing them kasi obs very observant sila. They're very thoughtful also. Alam nila kung sino yung may birthday, alam nila kung sino yung nagpagupet. Okay, so talagang they notice stuff. Melancholics are creative genius. As I've told you, painters, um, uh, composers, you know, these are melancholic people. They are perfectionist in nature. Okay? Ibig sabihin nun, mataas ang excellence nila. So, sometimes, that standard of excellence is the reason why either uh, they tend to not do stuff kasi sobrang taas tong nung ano nila eh, yung standard nila or people tend to disappoint them because dahil nga ang taas, taas ng level of perfectionism nila idealism nila sa isang bagay so pag meron silang nakita na isang bagay na off there's a tendency na parang ay ayoko na ganun so they're very detailed yan so ang melancholic sila yung mga because uh, they are the ones who put the details in the plan of a choleric. A choleric, remember, a risk taker yan. So, ang melancholic, siya yung magpuput into paper nung mga gustong gawin nung iyong choleric. No? Nung, nung choleric. So, they will actually, you know, masipag sila. Um, actually, these are the, if you're a melancholic, especially in school, I have friends who are melancholic, sila yung mga friends ko who have a lot of pouches on their bags. And so, pag may pencil case yan, tapos pag binuksan mo yung pencil case, very organized. Meron yung iba-ibang kulay ng ball pen, may highlighter yan, may ruler yan. You know, so they have this, all this uh, stuff in their bags, you know, um, for emergency. And meron pa yung, uh, probably, lagyan na ng basura sa bag nila. You know, na, nandun lang yung basura. Alam mo yan? So, they're very, very organized. Very, very detailed. And sila din yung mga classmates ko before na magaling magsulat. Ay, magaling mag magaling ba yun? Maganda magsulat. You know? Very good penmanship. Kaya, tapos kapag ka nag-lecture yung teacher namin, sila yung, yung notebook nila, 
ano, pwede mong ipaserox. Kasi ang ganda ng sulat, saka-highlight pa, naka-red yung, yung pag-topic yun. May, may ruler. Yan. So, melancholic. The melancholic is also a faithful friend. Uh, faithfulness is their natural impulse. Um, not just faithful friend, pero faithful din sila sa spouses or dun sa mga gusto nilang tao. Magugulat ka sa melancholic, alam mo yun, years have passed. Pero yung taong mahal niya noon, mahal pa rin niya ngayon. <laughs> alam mo yun? And they are, this, uh, the melancholics also, they have, as I told you, faithful friends, which means that yung mga friends niya probably nung elementary o nung high school, kahit pagtanda niya, friends pa rin sila. Although the friends that they have, is not many. Sabi po dito, no, doesn't have many friends. Because as I've told you, melancholics are introverts. Okay? So they don't have many friends, but those friends that they have, they're very loyal to them. Okay? So they're very loyal. They have time for them. Alam mo yun, pwede silang maging ninang ng mga anak nun. Talagang, alam mo yun, they, they, it goes a long way. They are very faithful to their friendships. Self-sacrificing. Isa sa positive uh, strength ng melancholic is that they are self-sacrificing tendency to be the breadwinner of the family. Um, inuna ang iba. Finishes assigned task on time. Behind the scenes worker. They, they love helping people. Pero not necessarily on the limelight. Kahit nasa backstage lang sila, they, they want to help others. Ayan. And they're very concerned about people. And at the same time, they know their limitations. Ayan ang isa sa mga strength ng sanguine, uh, sorry, ng melancholic, they know when to say no. Uh, yan po ang weakness ng choleric and sanguine because they don't know when to say no. May tendency na, alam mo yun, they get more than they can chew. But pag melancholic, they know their limitations. Okay. Weaknesses. So, isa sa mga weakness ng, me ng melancholic is self-centered. Meaning that they perform a lot of thought within themselves, okay? They per perform self-examination that paralyzes will and energy. There is a tendency for a melancholic to like self-analyze, self-criticize, may ganun siya. Always dissects himself and the situation in his mind. So parang inirepeat-repeat niya yung mga nangyari. Ano kaya yun? Ano kaya nagawa ko mali? Ako kaya yun? Ako kaya may problema? So meron siyang ganun. And sometimes, dahil nga mataas masyado yung standards niya for other people, mataas rin masyado ang standards niya para sa sarili niya. And pag di niya naabot yung standards na yun, there's this tendency to, to fall into this depression, to fall into this um, self-doubt. Easily offended or insulted. Isa sa mga weaknesses din ng melancholic is that if people, even through a joke, ano ba may nagbiro? Biro lang yun, pero they can be insulted, they can be hurt deeply at nadamdamin nila yun at paulit-ulit nila yung ire replace sa isap nila. Pessimistic. Looks at the problems of a possible project. So, pag may gagawin, ang una niyang naisip pag melancholic is ang, yung mga negative. Ang hirap niyan, parang di yan kaya. You know, those are the words na, na magka, uh, meron ba tayong ano, parang Ano mo yun? So, that's too expensive. So, nakikita nila agad yung negative things about the project. Disappointments discourages them to continue. So, as I've told you, there, there is this ten tendency not to finish what they've started because, you know, they got discouraged. You know? so, for example, sa kanila, napakasakit ng mga comments ng ibang tao. So, it takes, you know, a toll on, their, on themselves. And that's the reason why Ayon na nila, hindi na sila nagtutuloy. Too high expectations of others. That's also the tendency why some melancholics uh, do not get married. Ayan. So, hindi po sila nag-aasawa. Kasi sobrang taas yung expectations. So, even for the partner. So, kapag ka meron siyang uh, nakitang negative, parang nawawala yung, ano, they, they are get discouraged to continue the, the, the relationship. So, Aside from that, isa sa mga, kung meron kang kaibigan or kapatid or, you know, parent na melancholic, isa sa mapapansin mo that they're very moody. Meaning, abrupt mood changes that confuses others. So, kung kayo po ay merong uh, kakilala na melancholic, wag po kayo mag, mag, 
uh, taka dun sa mood changes. Isa po yun sa mga weaknesses nila. Minsan, uh, they, you know, they get to, you know, they are happy, pero may mga times na parang hindi ka nila papansinin. Huwag po kayo magala, it's not you, it's them. <laughs> so, uh, if you have a, a friend who's melancholic, kung nakoconfuse kayo sa kanyang moods, huwag kayo magala siya din, nakoconfuse sa moods niya. So, if you have a friend who is moody or a family member who's moody and, you know, tends to... But he's very good, very creative. Pero yun nga, moody nga lang. Very matalino, pero moody nga lang. So, yan yung mga weakness niya. Uh, revengeful. Uh-huh. Okay? So, ang isa sa mga weaknesses ng melancholic is uh, remember their faithful friends. So, if you break their trust, if you, if you are unfaithful to them, they will hold grudge for years. Alam mo yun, uh, hirap silang magpatawad, hirap silang kalimutan yung ginawa sa kanilang mali. They're unforgiving. So, um, and they judge others in their minds. <laughs> so, kung ang, uh, ang choleric daw po, uh, they judge others and say <laughs> their judgment kasi they're very opinionated. Ang melancholic, they also judge others but it's all in their minds. So, they will not say it to your face but it's there, you know? So, um, if you're if you have a friend who's melancholic, uh, they you know you or a family member who's melancholic, it's good for you to give them allowances to uh, for their moods. Kapag meron sila, they're under mood swings sila. Ayaw mo na sila, makikinig lang yun ng music sa kwarto or you know uh, just give them time and then eventually if the mood swing subsides or okay na yung emotions nila, they they will come out and then they will talk to you and. <laughs> Okay na yun. You can talk to them. They're very faithful. So, they also expect the same loyalty in return. Uh, ayaw nila na binibroadcast yung mga secrets nila. So, you have to make sure that you keep their confidence. No? So, ganyan po yung mga melancholic natin. Okay? So, um, these are the four temperaments. If you have, um, if you have like, friends or family na meron itong mga temperaments ito, it doesn't uh, mean na ah, okay, yun pala yung ano niya, yung weakness niya. So, um, or uh, for example, ikaw, nalaman mo, melancholic ka. So, let's say for example, uh, sabi mo sa family mo, ay, melancholic ako. So, dahil dyan, ano, uh, moody ako, wala kayong magagawa. You know, you cannot do that. You cannot use your temperaments as excuse for your behavior. However, you have because you know the temperaments of people, you have now a better understanding of how to deal with them, of how to have how to have relationships with them. So if you have a me melancholic friend, um your what you can do is to you can ask them for help. So they, they love giving help. Uh, they are as you know, they're very faithful, so give them time as well. And so that, that's what they, they want, you know. So I will end my talk with, uh, in terms of your temperaments, with this principle. This is known as the pain principle, okay? So there is, the, the first principle in the pain principle is known as there are many hurting people. Yeah, and so it's known, it's a known fact that three out of four, so before it's like, 50%. But now, it's like 3 out of 4 people are hurting. So, if you are, you know, if you are hurting right now, then you, together with other people, are experiencing the hurt. So, and and it's also good to, to put into mind that there are many people hurting around us. Even the different temperaments. The second thing to put into mind is that those hurting people are easily hurt by others. So if he, if there are people around you who are hurting, ibig sabihin madali rin po silang masaktan. It's actually called the splinter principle. Uh, the splinter principle is, um, for example, meron kang salubsob, you know, or meron kang sugat. I remember before when we were young, ano, um, ako po uh, and my sister, parang, Hindi ko na maalala kung sino sa amin, no? pero isa sa amin nagkasugat sa niece namin tsaka sa siko. And I remember na sa bahay kasi, kapag ka may sugat ka, mapapagalitan ka. Alam mo yun, pagbata ka. And then I remember us hiding that, 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 ano, that, the wounds. Now, we're, we're hiding the wounds so that our parents wouldn't know that 
that we have the wounds. Kasi ayaw namin mapagalitan. And then, um, can you imagine, let's say, let's say you have these wounds with you, no? Yung, uh, yung, 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 yung siko ay uh, nasugat at nabalatan, no? Tapos biglang may humawak sa'yo dito sa part na yon. Your reaction will be, you know, will be a reaction of anger. So, magtataka yung tao na humawak sa braso mo, ba't ka galit na galit? Tinawakan lang naman kita. Kasi hindi, kaya siya galit na galit kasi may sugat doon sa, na hindi mo nakikita. So, there is also a tendency for us to, you know, to be like that. If we are hurting, or if the people who are, are around us are hurting, kahit may ginawa lang tayong simple sa kanila, they have this tendency to react badly. And uh, that's called the splinter principle. The third principle is that those hurting people often hurt others. If you're hurting, there's a tendency for you to hurt other people as well. Um, with your words, of course. Kasi yung, yung, yung reaction mo is usually exaggeration. Kasi nga, may sugat eh. May pain. And then number four, those hurting people often hurt, hurt themselves. It's good for us to know that because people around us are hurting and because people around us are sensitive, we have to know that they more than hurting you, they tend to hurt themselves more. Those hurting people often hurt themselves. And it's the pain principle that we need to understand is that many of us are hurting and it goes a long way for each of us to make allowances for one another. Because for sure you have hurt someone with your words. For sure you have, because of your uh, tendencies, your temperaments, you've, you know, you've caused pain sa ibang tao. Or probably some people cause pain sa'yo, like, like your family members. But if we will just give them some form of allowances, alam mo yun, bigyan mo sila ng space to make mistakes and offer forgiveness. Even though the apology is not offered, ikaw na mismo mag ng apology. And then, you know, forgive them. Because the, the people who are hurting around us, we don't know who they are. But um, if we will take time, we will know that many of us are actually hurting. Many of us have experienced a lot of hurts in the past. And these hurts tend to manifest ngayon na uh, we are adults. You know, so this, um, this is your pain principle. So, um, the thing about temperaments is that you get to understand people. You get to understand um, who you are and at the same time, who you, your family, your, your, your parents are. Makikita mo, probably have a sanguine parent, you know, siya, siya yung cool parent, siya yung nagpapatawang parent, or prob- obnoxious parent, or probably you have a strict parent, or for sure, choleric parent yan, or a melancholic parent. Sila yung mga loving parent, like uh, they are uh, affectionate parents, or probably you have a phlegmatic parent, you know, yung parent mo na cool lang, kalma lang, alam mo yun? You know, um, but, Understanding these different temperaments will help you actually understand them, where they're coming from. And I hope that uh, what we had right now, this webinar, actually gave you an input on who you are and also who they are so that you can understand them better. So if you want to know more about your temperament or if you want to know how to grade your test and you have not yet taken the test or graded your test, you can hit us up on the comment section. This webinar will be available also on my uh, YouTube channel. If you want to review it after you've taken the test, um, you can do so. Uh, I just want to probably end this um, webinar with a prayer. A prayer for you, now that you know your temperaments, for you to take responsibility on who you are, and also improve on your weaknesses. Now, let me remind you that the strengths and weaknesses that I've mentioned here are um, 
you can hone those strengths. And for the weaknesses, you can overcome them a little, you know, little by little every day. So, for example, your problem is with your anger and you're a choleric. Then you can, you know, uh, do something about it. You know, have an action plan. If your problem is your shyness, you're a phlegmatic, you know, probably engage yourself more with people or do something out of your comfort zone because phlegmatics love their comfort zones. If you're melancholic and, you know, it's hard for you to forgive, probably this is the time that you would reach out to someone who have hurt you in the past and just offer the forgiveness. If you're a sanguine and your weakness is being talkative, you know, probably this time, try listening. Try active listening. And probably, uh, you know, you can hone uh, that weakness or arrange something if you're a sanguine uh, to to compromise for your disorganization, fix your bag or your room for that matter. So I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did. So let me uh, end this uh, webinar uh, with a prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we're thankful and grateful for this time that you've given us to be able to understand our temperaments and the temperaments of people around us. Lord, thank you for um, allowing us to see uh, our identity, the, the needs, the need for change, and also our strengths, Lord God, the need to hone these strengths, to be able to use them uh, to help others, to help people. Father, we thank you for allowing us to, uh, to know ourselves, Lord God, and to also know you. And if there is anyone... Um, amongst us, Lord God, who needs somebody to talk to, who needs someone who um, will listen to them, um, please provide a way, Lord God, for us to be able to reach out and um, allow you or allow people who love them to know where they're coming from. We praise you and thank you, Lord God, for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to end this uh, webinar with uh, Thanksgiving to um, ABC Above and Beyond Classrooms for hosting us, to GCF uh, Santa Rosa for, uh, for the Zoom. And um, thank you for all our viewers. Okay, thank you for watching us. Uh, if you uh, just, you know, we're ending the meeting already, but if you just, you know, tuned in, you can um, you can find this webinar on my YouTube channel. So we'll be uploading it soon. So thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. And if you need somebody to talk to, don't hesitate to message us at Above and Beyond Classrooms. Um, wait for our announcement for our next webinar. If you have suggestions for the next webinar, you can also comment it. Um, uh, through the comment section below. Thank you so much for joining us and God bless you always. Goodbye.